I'm just gonna start at the beginning with the house. Look at this house, man. The house was exactly like I remembered it, the way I'd been dreaming about it. Edie told me once that every finch who ever lived is buried somewhere in the library. Spent a lot of time playing in Great Uncle Walter's room. Turns out, my mom was really good at keeping secrets. Molly Finch. I'll be gone soon, but I wanted to tell somebody about what's going to happen. It started when Mom sent me to bed without dinner. The gerbil the food. The gerbil food was dry, but I didn't mind. Bro, there's gerbil doo-doo right next to the food. I kept eating and eating. The barn swallow going back to her nest. Suddenly, I was a cat. I could tell she was getting really tired. All I cared about was eating that mama bird. Ah! Gobbled her up! And suddenly, I was an owl. First. Oh, we hunt rabbits. Come on. Come on. Perfect. I swallowed him up, and I didn't chew one bit. Mm -hmm. Now I was a monster, and I smelled people everywhere. Yeah. Ah! All of my stomach started growling. You still hungry? And suddenly, I was me again. I held my breath for a long time. Oh, hell now You got to check under that bed. I think it's waiting for me to fall asleep. But it's not going to wait much longer. It needs to be. And we both know I will be delicious. Whoa. I'm not sure if I believed all of that, but I'm sure Edie would have. Can't describe it, but I felt like some part of Molly was still here. I grew up looking at Molly's room through the peephole. Being inside for the first time, I felt like I'd stepped behind a painting. All right, so last time we were exploring the room of Molly. Um, I guess it's one of the family members. Here's the little family tree. There goes Molly down there. Um, they kept comparing her to a cat or um, they said that there was a, a cat in the family also named Molly. I'm not sure if that's just because this Molly loved cats, but I'm still trying to figure it out, y'all. But we're about to get there. All right, so it looks like they're making us crawl out the window here. Maybe this cat is Molly. I'm not sure. They don't this explain too much right away. Her, but my mom never told me any of these stories. Edie would have, but mom didn't like bringing up the past. Didn't like bringing up the past. We heard so, that at the end of the first when episode. When we adopted a stray kitten, she was the one who named it Molly. I spent a lot of time in Great Grandma Edie's room. So this is Grandma Edie's room. Look like she's a bird person. Yo, I remember these. These are so throwback. Oh my for god. For hundred years, the finches have been famous throughout Norway for their fortune and misfortune. Norway, so the family's Norwegian for 500 years, so they got a pretty deep history. Odin Finch buries the latest victims of the family curse. His wife, Ingeborg, and their newborn son. Family wow. curse? On January 7th, 1937 he set sail with his family and his house hoping to leave the curse behind so my man set sail with the entire house on the boat all right all right all right but what about this what if the curse was in the house ah you didn't even think about that but 40 foot waves off the coast of washington send the house and odin to the bottom of the sea all right so Odin's that's a completely Edie, different house i guess then Sven and baby molly Step ashore on their new home, Orcas Island. Say Edie. Okay, so we're in Edie's room. That's Grandma Edie, and Odin was her father. Got you. With husband Sven and baby Molly. So Molly... Okay, so Molly is whose room we explore, explored in episode one, and she is the daughter of Edie and Sven. Got you, got you. I'm piecing it together. Odin Finch is the first to be buried in the new family cemetery. Hey, Odin Finch, that's the OG of the family. The new Finch house. All right, that must be where they were building the current house. Okay. 
whatever's wrong with this family, it goes back a long ways. All right, so I'm guessing that the leaves that aren't connected to the tree are people who married into the family. So we got Ingenborg, who is the wife of Odin. They got Edie as a child who was married to Sven, and their baby was Molly. All right, Grandma Edie, what you got for us? Lewis died a week before we left, but Edie had already started to memorialize him. Oh, she was paint painting him in like a tree stump. Edie knit me a new pair of gloves every year, just in time to replace the old ones. Uh, Edie was a painter, a knitter, a bird connoisseur. She had great fashion. When Edie told people Sven was killed by a dragon, she could also have said he was building a dragon-shaped slide that collapsed. She could have, but she didn't. Oh, she said Sven, who was her husband, was killed by a dragon. But that was the dragon we seen in episode one that was in the lake. I didn't know it was supposed to be a slide, and I guess there was a tragedy. Wow. I guess that must be part of the family curse then, right? Jesus. Even in her 90s, sometimes Edie seemed a lot younger than my mother. Ain't no way you got full shag rug in the bathroom. That's that's disgusting, honestly. Hopefully she kept it clean, though. All right, we got a key for this. I'm guessing that key that we got is just like a master key for all this. There's a secret in this bathroom. It's in the last place you would look. It isn't in the cupboard. Not in the cupboard. It's hidden in this book. Uh, just like last time. All right, so the secrets be chilling in the books, it seems like. Oh, she did a little bit of photography, it looked like. Is this a dark room? Yeah. Ben gave Sam an old camera he'd refurbished. He never put it down. Okay, so this is Sam's dark room. Okay, I see Sam right there, 1950. All right, pulling up on Sam's room. I knew Grandpa Sam had a twin. Grandpa Sam. And that he never talked about him. So Grandpa Sam had a twin. I'm guessing this is Grandma Edie's I guess my brother. Grandpa didn't like history any more than my mom did. I mean, the family is cursed, cursed. So this must be the twin, Calvin. Sam and Calvin. How I want to remember my brother, by Sam Finn. Oof. The thing I remember is that when he made up his mind, that was it. My man trying to swing with one foot. Oh, here we go. Look, <laughs> I was using one stick, bro. My brother said he'd die before he I'm swinging ever. crooked as shit. And he did. Wow, before At he ate Barbara another Pino, mushroom. We swore. He'd never be afraid again. And he wasn't. I think Calvin always wanted to fly. How did he die? He didn't like jump off of anything, did he? Coming! But that day, he finally made up his mind to do it. Do I gotta jump off this swing? I told him going around was impossible. Bro, if he jumps off this swing off of here, oh my God. All right, it said Calvin always wanted to fly. You might get his chance Maybe right here. I hadn't said that. Calvin, I'm not gonna tell you again. My man going for the jump them. world record off the swing. What was that? And maybe he'd still be here. But I doubt. 
I think he'd already made up his mind. Oh my god, bro. That's oh. what I want to remember about my brother. Oh, Calvin really didn't care. <gasps> Ain't no way we're doing 360s. The day he made up his mind to fuck. And he did. Calvin's story felt strangely familiar. Wow. When I was younger, I remember trying to do the exact same thing. Trying to do the exact same thing? Not off a cliff? Not off a cliff into into the into the ocean with some rocks? You didn't try to do it like that. All right, Calvin, he did that when he was 11 years old. After the funeral, Edie rubbed off Calvin's half of the room. Mom so said Grandma Calvin Sam the room. at 18 and never set foot in the room again. Hey, this house is baller, though. You can't say it ain't. Passages were a pretty tight fit. They'd obviously been built for smaller hands and bellies. All right. Uh, Milton? Milton's all the way up there. Maybe we should wait for Milton. He seems a little bit more modern, whoever that is. Let's go in here. Mom must have locked the third floor stairs on the night we left. All right, so mom locked the third floor. I'm sure, there'll be another way inside. It's Calvin and Sam. Gregory. As a kid, I just assumed every house had peepholes and sealed rooms you weren't allowed inside of. Yeah, well, we got peepholes into the bathroom. My grandpa Sam spent seven years sharing a room with his dead brother. Ugh. Wow. Yeah, they probably didn't want to get rid of everything right away. That's Edie's room. The last time I was in Edith Sr.'s room, I was 10 and she was painting my portrait. Edith Sr. Edith Sr. That's probably why I'm named Edith, so I must be Edith the Jr. Been in that room. Pretty sure we've been in this room, Molly. That's Molly's room. Molly always seemed like a girl I could imagine being friends with if she hadn't died in 1947. Oh yeah, Molly old old. She didn't make it that long though. She was only 10 years old when she passed. I don't think they actually said what happened to her. Her story was about being hungry, so maybe she starved to death? Barbara was a child star for two years until America grew out of it. Barbara was a child star, okay. Hopefully she made a little bit of money before she got up out of there. All right, let's see what's going on in Barbara's room before we get up out of here. Growing up, Barbara Finch, my friend Barbara Bigfoot. Star. Ain't no way she starred in a, 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 a sitcom about being friends with Bigfoot. For two years, like, how did they bring that back? It's hard to get a second season from any of these shows nowadays. And you got two years playing Bigfoot's best friend. GG's, it was a different time back then. I never thought about how hard it must have been for her afterwards. After she fell off, it's bound to happen to everybody, you know, eventually. Of all the stories, guest starring, oh, she was a guest star in a death, comic. I'm surprised Edie saved this one. 
Hey, that's tight though. Are we about to get sucked into the comic? With another ghastly tale inspired by America's most unfortunate family. I'm calling it the surprise ending of Barbara Finch. Oh, everybody know we cursed, huh? As a child star, Barbara was famous for her scream. Now at 16, she was all washed up. Or has been. Washed? Damn. In a lucky break, she'd been asked to perform her signature scream at a local convention for monster movie fans. She's probably like, nah, it I don't do that no more. Boost her career needed. Said I'm past that in my career now. Her scream hadn't aged well. Oof. <laughs> she needs some tea and lemon. Getting better. A little bit of honey up in there. The right motivation. Her biggest fan and current boyfriend, Rick, was about to demonstrate when. Now that was a great scream. It was Bob's yeah, it was kind of fire. Sven. He'd slipped into a table saw and had to be rushed to the emergency room. So Barbara got stuck babysitting her youngest brother, Walter. So that must be when he uh, was building the What's dragon. <laughs> okay, Ninja came back canceled. But I'm not hearing terror. What if I tried? A gang of hoodlums and Halloween masks have been terrorizing Orca's Island tonight. Police are urging residents to. That came from the basement. You're right. Also, I loved your delivery on that. Why is your oh, basement? Oh, girl, you about to get jump scared? Because my dad likes making puzzles and secrets. Oh, this is a setup. There's a key hidden in the music box. The secret is to keep winding and winding until finally the key pops out. Thanks, babe. I'll be back in a sec. 20 minutes later, Rick hadn't returned. So Barbara went to look for him right on cue. This is something that really happened though, right? A hundred percent. She reached for the music box. And as she wound the key, she listened for Rick. But the house was silent. Oh, we in here. Oh, they got me in here. Not the Halloween music. She found Rick's crutch. Oh, we about to have to run away from some. Her dude was murdered in the basement? Oh shit. I saw this. Oh, what is that? The gang's leader is the infamous hookman killer, Dr. Carl Hamill, who impaled and then ate his family 10 years ago tonight. Impaled and ate the family. I'm about to have to knock him the fuck out. Oh, that ain't no raccoon. That ain't no raccoon. Oh, dear. Oh. Rick? You play Barb, jokes? That's relax. what happens. I was just trying to scare you to help you find your scream. You know damn I'm well that's what happens. Rick. I'm furious. Then act furious. All I'm getting from you now is that you're hurt and confused. And you hey, <laughs> look. Him out. But she kept a little something remember him by Barb have you seen my other crutch and she was still holding it when she fell asleep I thought he was the late, late picture show good luck getting home my boy later. Barbara Walter what's going on up there ah! okay I'm coming up I'm coming up with, with the crutch Chris. I know that Dead, Walter. That's all I know. I'm coming up with the crutch. Y'all play too much in this house. Y'all play too much in this house, bro. And just like old oh boy, somebody about to get smacked with this crutch. Say they won't. Wow. 
Okay. Vanished. But his pet son, Radio, was still on. Orca's Island Police described the man as six feet tall, with a steel hook for a hand. Residents are urged to lock all doors and windows and notify the police of any suspicious activity. I returned, saw the hook man, and was speechless. Is she about to do it? He was was speechless. Fashion. Why'd you scream? Barbara. <laughs> <laughs> There's gotta be another way out of here. Come on, we gotta get up out of here, yo. All right, um, oh, the 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 the, the thing, the thing, the thing, the thing. Secret passageway. She played her part. Okay, we're in Molly's room. A comic book version of Molly's room. But just couldn't do it. Oh, it's gonna be creaking. Smack him. And he slipped. And he's gone. Let's go. Downstairs, downstairs, downstairs. Why, why are you going so slow? He ain't gonna be there. The hook man had vanished. She listened for his breathing, but all she heard was. Is it man y'all fucking with me so who did we almost body on the stairs and she saw what kind of monsters they were and she realized what was about to happen she was going She sold her soul, hey. Barbara Finch gave the performance of her life. I was and then she got eaten? But I hear Barbara was magnificent. Poor girl. She had a taste for stardom. Taste for stardom. But unfortunately, so did her fans. Of course, the police blamed it all on poor Rick, who disappeared the same night. So they ate and Rick too. Walter, hiding under his bed the whole time. They took it all pretty hard, but that's another story. As for Barbara, tucked inside the music box is all they ever found of her. Her. A real eerie tale. <laughs> what is this game? Edie told me all Barbara wanted was to be remembered. As absurd as that comic was, maybe what Edie saw was a happy ending. All right, all right. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if this is supposed to be literal. I don't know if this really happened. Like a bunch of her fans got together and 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 literally attacked her, or if this is something that she made up 
for her to be remembered or like a creative piece that she wanted to do i don't know i feel like we got to get a little deeper to really understand how this game operates because it likes to use a lot of symbolism but i feel like some of this stuff is based in truth all right, so I think that's a good point for us to go ahead and end the episode. We kind of need to chill, step back, and, you know, digest what's been going on. Kind of like uh, Barbara's fans digested her when they uh, when they ate her at the end. I'm not really sure if that really happened. Hopefully, it's just, uh, just a bit of symbolism, but um, be on the lookout for more What Remains of Edith Finch in the near future. And as always, y'all, be safe, spread love, and I'll catch y'all in the next one.